Hey, I hope that you are enjoying your time at your in-home fellowship, and I'm just thankful that we would have uh, just a few minutes together, really this evening or this afternoon, where whatever time it is that you're meeting with your in-home fellowship, I wanna thank you for just stopping and taking the time to, uh, to gather together. I wanna to talk with you for just a few minutes um, about one word, just one word that I really want us to think about as we, uh, as we study a passage together, and then one word that I want us to kind of focus on even the next few months as we continue to, uh, to transition, uh, our transition of two services and our transition into our prayer nights at church and our in-home fellowships and then some of our nights of worship. And that one word is the word community, community. Our theme for this year has been uh, only Jesus. The idea behind the theme is that people would look at our lives and that they would see only Christ. That whether it's uh, how we carry ourselves in public, how we talk about uh, people or how we talk uh, to people, how we spend time with our family, the forgiveness that we offer people, really every area of our life, uh, we want it to represent only Jesus. And when I think about the church or the Christian community of the church, I can't help but think about John chapter 13. It's a familiar portion of scripture, but John chapter 13, verse 34 and 35, it says this, Jesus speaking, he says, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. And in verse 35, he says this, by this, by this type of love, loving one another as Christ loves us, by this shall all men know that you're my disciples, if you have love one to another. We've seen this before, but one of the best ways for Christians to live an only Jesus life is by loving the Christian community. John chapter 13 is a time when Jesus is addressing his uh, closest followers. He's about to go to the cross. He's about to go into uh, one of the longest passages we have of Jesus speaking, John 13 through 17. But he kind of starts all of it. After having washed the disciples' feet and served them, he just helps these disciples, these followers understand this thought. As you love people, as you love other Christians, as you love other followers of Jesus Christ, you will represent me. By this love, everyone will know that you belong to me. You know, if you look in the, uh, in the early church in the book of Acts, what we see is we see them growing. We see them being used by God. But one of the themes that you find in that early church was the theme of community, the theme of loving other Christians, the theme of spending time together. And you can look in countless places in the book of Acts, book of Acts and you find them uh, eating a meal together. And you find them praying together and jumping into the Word of God together. But then you have tons of places where you just find Christians spending time together. The reason I want us to think about the word community is because this year we want to spend some time focused on community. As I've moved into uh, 2023 and as I was uh, planning in uh, 22 for 2023, one of the concepts that's really just been on my mind and on my heart for the last few years and specifically coming into 2023 is helping our church family just enjoy spending time together. We're at, a, at an incredible time as we look toward our building and we look toward raising money for that and we see uh, the transition to two services and we see a lot of people uh, jump in and, and start serving, but we can't forget just spending time together. And so I want to challenge you with a couple of thoughts today. Number one, number one, I want to ask you, does your life demonstrate this only Jesus type of love? Does your life demonstrate a love for others in Christ, um, a love that people can look at and say, wow, that reminds me of Jesus? Do you love others like Jesus loves others? Number two, and Brian helped us with this last week out of, out of Hebrews chapter number 10, 
The idea of fellowship within the church, the idea of the church community, I wonder, are you loving others by spending time with them? Are you loving others by fellowshipping with them? Are you loving others by not forsaking the assembling together? Are you spending time with other Christians? This year, uh, as we've transitioned to the two services, one of the, uh, one of the ways we want to focus on community is by, by utilizing our Sunday nights uh, effectively. And so you'll notice that this year there's going to be some weeks where we don't have just a normal Sunday night service. We have, like last week, no evening service because we want to encourage our church family, go out to eat with somebody. Go spend time with somebody. This summer we're going to have some of our summer night activities, going bowling together and and, uh, going to the roller skating rink up in Soap Lake again and just enjoying some barbecues together, our in-home fellowships praying together, and then some of our special Sunday night services of, of worship and prayer. But the whole design is to help us realize how healthy it is when Christians love like Christ and spend together, spend time together fellowshipping like Christ has asked us to. And so tonight in your growth group, I just want to give you a couple of questions that I want you to simply talk about together. The first question is this, how does spending time with other believers, how does it help you? How does, how does it encourage you? What, what blessings have you seen in your life by spending time with other Christians? Number two, What are some places in Scripture where time together was beneficial for those written about? Maybe you'll go to the book of Acts, or maybe you might go even to the Old Testament and find places in the Word of God where we see believers or followers of God coming together, banding together, and then accomplishing something great for God. I'm reading through the book of Nehemiah right now, and I'm reminded of Nehemiah chapter number two, where the people came together, and with one mind they said, let us rise up and build. And, but there was a togetherness first. There was a time of Nehemiah meeting with them and saying, hey, here's the vision, let's spend time. And then you go through the book of Acts, they, or excuse me, the book of Nehemiah, they spend time fellowshipping together, working together, eating together, and God blessed that. So what are some places in Scripture where time together was beneficial for those that were there. And then the last question that I want us to talk through tonight is this. What are some things that you as a group would like to do together this year? What are some things maybe that you might say, hey, on on one of these Sunday nights when we don't have service, let's let's all go to this restaurant, spend time together. Hey, on one of these Sunday nights, let's maybe not, let's kind of have our own in-home fellowship. Let's host a a barbecue at this person's house and just spend time playing games together. What would you as a group like to do to just help create this culture of community in your group and in our church? As we have uh, transitioned to our two-service schedule this year, one of my focuses, again, has just been to help our church spend time together. And so I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to determine that you are going to be a Christian that shows the love of Christ to others, loves people like, like Jesus loves them, and that you're going to, one of the ways that you're going to accomplish that is by spending time with other believers, spending time with other folks from Moses Lake Baptist Church, other Christians in our community. But tonight, specifically in your group, take some time, answer these questions, and ask God to help you and to help our church focus on community and see what God does when we love each other and when we band together. I hope this will be a help to you. Hope it'll be an encouragement to you. I look forward to seeing you again this week, and I look forward to hearing about how God uh, helps us tonight just fall in love with our church and our church family again and enjoy spending time together. Have a great week, and look forward to seeing you next Sunday at the service that you attend. Have a good day.